Hey everybody, CatSynth TV, and today we are exploring the logistic map. Over the course of two videos, we are going to delve into the simple function's properties, including period doubling and chaos. But first, please do subscribe to this channel for more cultural content coming out regularly. And please do consider supporting us via Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links in the description below. Take a quadratic function of this form. Graphically, this produces a downward-facing parabola, like this. The logistic map is the process of applying this function repeatedly. Now, if you haven't seen our video on fixed points yet, we recommend checking that out first, as it is the key to everything that we're about to discuss. We're going to put a link to it right up here and in the description below. If we look at the quadratic function when parameter a is less than 1, we see that it has just one fixed point where it crosses the line y equals x at 0. And because the slope of the parabola here is less than 45 degrees, values of the map will converge to 0. Now if we set the parameter to 2, we see that it has two fixed points. The slope at 0 is now greater than 45 degrees, so it repels values away, while the other fixed point is an attractor. However, when we get to values of a above 3, both fixed points have slopes greater than 45 degrees and are thus both repelling. So where do values of the logistic map end up in this case? We can explore the behavior at different parameters with a simple program. I'm going to once again use the functional language Haskell because I can easily express the logistic map this way, and also generate functions for different values of a. Using the built-in function iterate, we can run the map for as many iterations as we want. We encapsulate it in this little one-line program to take the first 300 values and print them out. For values of a less than 1, like 0.5, we see that it converges to 0. When a is 2, it converges to 1 half. And for 2.1, another non-zero fixed point. Now let's try 3.1, where both fixed points are repelling. We see that instead of landing on a single value, it settles into an alternating pattern with two values. We see this again for 3.2. Now let's try a larger number, 3.5. This time it settles into a repeated pattern of four numbers. As we continue to increase the parameter, we see that the pattern doubles in size to 8, 16, but after around 3.57, it appears to be completely without pattern, not settling down. Moreover, we get different behaviors depending on the initial value. This is the essence of chaos. Indeed, the logistic map is one of the simplest functions we can use to demonstrate chaotic behavior. We can generate a plot of the different behaviors of the map at different parameters by writing another program, this time in the language Swift. If we look at the plot, we see how the periods of repetition double after 3, and that the period doubling gets faster and faster until the onset of chaos at around 3.57. We call this plot a bifurcation diagram, and it is endlessly fascinating. Even after the onset of chaos, there are these interesting pockets of stability, like this range where we see repetitions of 3 values. We can zoom in and look more closely at that range, between 3.8 and 3.9. Within the stable range, we see many bifurcations and period doubling until chaos resumes. Let's zoom in on this mini bifurcation. We see that it too has periods of chaos and stability, and that the diagram as a whole exhibits self-similarity. Let's zoom in again. We see these stable periods of 7 and 5 values, as well as ever smaller bifurcation patterns. Let's zoom back out and look in more detail at the period doubling and onset of chaos. As we noted earlier, the interval between period doublings gets shorter and shorter. Indeed, if we look at the ratios between interval values, they are diminishing at a nearly proportional rate. If we take the limit of these ratios, we arrive at a very specific number, the Feigenbaum constant. The constant is named for physicist Mitchell J. Feigenbaum, who discovered it while analyzing the logistic map and showed that it applies to all systems that approach chaos via period doubling. Let's look at another map, the sine map. 
Although it is generated from a very different function, we see that its bifurcation diagram is quite similar. Its period doubling is still proportional to the Feigenbaum constant, and we see similar areas of stability after the onset of chaos. This universality is one of those surprising but delightful results in mathematics. In part two, we're going to look at what happens when we use complex coefficients, so please do come back for that. And if you have any questions about anything you heard today, please do let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to CatSynth TV. You are watching CatSynth TV.